talk to me about the church. The church is, if you read the, the popular press, the church is yes. having difficult times right now, especially in this country. When I was a young boy, ages ago, sure. growing up in a predominantly Catholic neighborhood, yes. many families had, had a young man who was heading into the priesthood. Yes. And they were very proud of that fact. We hear now that it's, that it's different. These are tougher, challenging times and that the church is perhaps in a, I'm not sure of a crisis situation, but is challenged to replenish the number of priests necessary for this country. Is that true? Well, well I think it, it has been a challenge, but uh, we find that uh, things are changing. I was just with a group of bishops in, in Rome recently, and kind of across the country, uh, that picture is changing. It certainly changed in Peoria when I was there. We ordained uh, many priests. And here in Newark, we are ordaining many priests. So we do not have a sh priest shortage here in this archdiocese. Now, some other dioceses do, but we're finding that young people uh, are searching. Uh, they're asking questions, and, and we encourage that because we've had uh, almost two generations of uh, people, even within the church, who tried to live in a church that never was, that never will be, rather than the church as it is, and the church as it is uh, presided over by the bishops. What is a church that never was and never will be? What do you yeah, mean by that, that? that? That means that they had, uh, they had ideas uh, that uh, interpreting the Second Vatican Council, for example, in ways that the council never intended, and that the leadership of the church has said that is not what the council said. Any particular issue there? I mean, because uh, that was, of course... Uh, Pope John's era, the, the Great Reformation, one would say, about where the church had gone. I, I, was in Rome, I was in Rome during the council, and I saw one of the interesting things that happened is that the media became part of the dynamic of the council for the first time in the history of the church. And, and in fact, uh, some of the biases of the media became reflected in the discussions around the council. In terms of pressuring and, and, the council to go in certain and, directions? Yes, and, and trying to uh, influence bishops to articulate their point of view within St. Peter's where the council was being held. Should the, should the church, I mean, you, you hit on something very interesting here because there has been talk among some that the church needs to take a step back in some areas perhaps or redefine itself. Do you believe that? I, I don't know what you mean by take a step back. I mean, I think we should be true to our tradition and teaching with a 2,000-year history and, mm -hmm. and uh, all the polls you take or all the opinions which are, form, are formed by the, the uh, liberal media here in the United States are not going to make any difference in what we teach. Mm -hmm. what, what it might make a difference in is we try to find a way more effectively to say it which I tried to do in this pastoral. I was not teaching anything new. I was trying to find ways to teach which were straightforward, that pe could people could understand and deal with. So instead uh, of the church essentially trying to, to water down some viewpoints to became, become more popular or more acceptable. Unacceptable. A, it's, that's unacceptable. Absolutely. Uh, would you have kept the, Latin, the mass in Latin? Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm happy with the revised liturgy, although when I was in Rome as a student, even my classes at the Jesuit University and uh, the exams and books were all in Latin, so I lived in Latin for four years. But, but in fact, uh, I, I think the change to the vernacular, that is to the language of the people, was a very healthy change because people want to participate and want to understand, and I'm very much in favor of that. We do permit, and this Pope has uh, urged us to permit, in some instances where there's a significant group of people who, who want the more traditional Mass in Latin, that the, arch, the Archbishop or the Bishop of the Diocese can give permission for that to occur only in that under those circumstances in a particular parish or different parishes. We have several parishes in the Archdiocese where a Mass in the traditional, traditional uh, Tridentine, actually, liturgy is uh, celebrated. But uh, I, I, have, I, I would not know how to do it because I was <laughs> ordained a priest after the council. There was a, a recent uh, demographic survey yes. showing for the first time in American history yes. that the United States does not have a, a Protestant majority anymore. I just noticed anymore. that in the paper this morning. What does that say to you? Well, it means that we have a lot of immigration going on. Uh, and it also says that uh, a lot of young people are more... Uh, confused, they haven't got the message. And what I'm finding, and, and I think it's a sign of great hope, uh, 
because uh, I Skype, we have 30 high schools in the Archdiocese. The Archbishop uh, Skypes. I Skype with, with, with different classrooms at the high schools. They can ask me anything they want. Mm -hmm. and, what, and, and our young seminarians uh, studying at Seton Hall University, uh, they just want a, the, the, a straightforward answer. Not my personal opinion, uh, not someone else's personal opinion, but what does the church teach and hold on specific issues which, the, which they might bring up? And they're free to say, well, you know, I can't buy that, or uh, thank you for telling me. But what they really want is a straight answer. And I think that's a sign of great hope. The uh, immigration, the growing number uh, yes. in the, in the uh, Hispanic Absolutely. and Latino population. Absolutely. Well, the, we have mass in over 20 languages every weekend in the Archdiocese of Newark. 20 languages. Yes. So, so we're, we're a very ethnic uh, archdiocese, and we're proud of that. And we make every effort to welcome new people to this country and to find ways to serve them in their own language whenever we can. And we do, basically, we're able to do that by the goodness of our priests and inviting in some priests from their own countries and that sort of thing. That, in that survey we just discussed, the one that showed that I believe some 20% of Americans now say they have no religion at I all. I notice that. What does that say to you? It says to me that the media is very powerful. The media? Media is very biased in a secular way. The, the fact that 20%, because the media is convincing people to leave their religions? No, because the media does not refer things to a transcendent or to God, but uh, it helps people to adapt, I think, which is a, a fallacy, on, on their, their own feelings, uh, their own uh, current thoughts, their own current uh, preferences as the focal point of morality or of, of religion, and that's not the case. Uh, God has approached us, and it's for us to conform our lives to God's plan for creation and not to try to, uh, each of us, create our own little world or our own little universe in which we will live because that's not reality. Is it, what, what part of the media? Is it the news coverage? Is it the entertainment programming? Well, what precisely? Uh, Probably all. The newspapers are certainly uh, very much involved and, I, you know, having been attacked uh, rather regularly by the Star-Ledger, I don't mind saying that uh, they were reporting their own biases rather than the half hour or 45 minute interview which I gave them, which did not appear in any of the, their reporting. So that's one way of filtering the news. Uh, some of the shows I see in television uh, are appalling because th they don't really have a moral referent. It's uh, what makes me feel good right now or what they think the audience might think makes them feel good right now, which is not a good way to live. It's because we need to go to fundamental principles and a fundamental identity of who men and women are and by God's design and live according to that and not try to create some new humanity which does not exist. It's, it sounds like a bleak picture. Are you an optimist? I'm, a, I'm very much an optimist because I believe that uh, God is active in history and will, will lead us forward. And we've gone through difficult times before. And, uh, and uh, you know, we're still here. <laughs> and and, and, and we're, we're still thriving. And we, you know, our school systems, our Catholic charities, our, our churches, which are uh, very, very large and active, the parishes active in not just worship and prayer, although certainly that or would make, wouldn't make much sense, but in all kinds of activities for, for the poor, the outcast, the, the immigrant. Uh, we, we, we want to welcome people, and we do welcome people, but we don't get much news coverage on that. You got it here today. Thank you. Archbishop John J. Myers, thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Mike. Appreciate it. My pleasure.